All right, this is a pattern that we posted on Instagram a few days ago, and it got uh, quite a bit of interest, so uh, we decided to uh, do a video on it. So it's, uh, the pattern is, type is, it's in a streamer pattern basically, but it's an alevin, which is uh, newly hatched trout or salmon, and uh, they typically have an egg sac, so that's kind of the main feature on this one. And uh, so obviously spring, or whenever you'll have the little fishies uh, hatching would be the best time to fish this. And uh, I, I, it's one of those patterns, type of patterns, if you talk to people that uh, have fished them before, that it's kind of one of those um, little secretive hush-hush patterns that work really well. So uh, anyway, we're going to tie this inverted style. So I'm going to start with my uh, bead little bump on top. It's a lot easier than it looks if you've just looked at the picture. So uh, the two components to the little egg sac is some monofilament and then a 3.8 millimeter tungsten bead in a hot orange or orange. So the first thing we'll do is just take our mono and I want to tie that in on top of the hook, which will ultimately be the bottom, just uh, so that it's about equal to the hook point there. And you just want to make sure that it stays on top. And you don't want to work your way too far forward there. And then I'm going to take my large tinsel and just tie that in right at that point. And we'll leave this here. And we'll wrap that up later, but I like to tie that in right now. I'll just leave that in the material clip. Now the next thing we'll do is we're going to take the bead and I usually like to have it facing the same way you would put it on with the small hole going forward and I'm just going to slide that on just like that and obviously it's not going to want to stay the you know the this is 25 pound mono so it's it's relatively stiff but I want that bead to be about the midway point between the hook and the eye because we need some room to tie in our eyes so what I'll do is I'll just kind of eyeball that and then you work your thread up to about just before that and then you'll hold your bead and then come down right in front of it a couple of loose wraps and then tighten that up as you go and then just make sure that mono stays on the top of the hook and then we can wrap this forward a little bit. Now I'm going to come in here and clip the mono. It's right there at the eye of the hook. And now I'll grab the tinsel and we'll just wrap that forward. You only need it to come to about that point. Again, we're going to put some eyes in there. And that's where we'll tie the materials in. Okay, so that's that's how the fly will ride. So our materials are going to be on this side here. But before we do that, I'm going to move my thread all the way as far forward as I can. And now I'm going to start the egg sac treatment, which consists of three things. It's going to be some uh, Loon UV fly paint in orange. It's going to be some Loon uh, UV clear fly finish in thick. And then we'll finish it off with some flow. And... The nice thing that this does, so you've got your solid bead, then this fly paint is going to give a little bit more orange, and then the thick is clear, and so it creates a nice little 3D effect. So what we'll do is we're just going to, uh, we'll just apply this paint around, I always like to put it in behind the bead here, and then around uh, the, the bead for one coating. Okay, you don't want to get that too thick because um, it will not cure very well. So I just want to make sure that that's nice and even. I usually have a little craft stick so I can uh, hit spots that I miss or that have some uh, bigger chunks of resin in there. And then once that looks good, I'm going to zap it. So that's the first layer. Alright, now for the second layer, we're going to use some thick 
One of the reasons why I love using the Loon products is because it covers the gamut of what you'll need from the colored stuff to the thick and the tack-free uh, flow. But this is nice because again, it's going to hold the shape. It will build up a little bit more of that egg sac where we're away from the, the chunk of the egg. And so same kind of thing. We're just going to apply some around the, uh, the bead and create that second layer. Now one thing I'm going to do here is that the egg sacs do uh, tend to taper back towards the body. And of course they're not going to be as orange as the yolk or whatever you want to call it. So I'll, I'll, I'll put a little bit there. And I'm just going to pull a little bit back this way. Spread it around. And again, you don't want to put that on too thick before you cure it because uh, it won't cure all the way through. So we'll do relatively thin layers. And I like to do one more layer of the thick to again taper a little bit more towards the back and build that part up. And then again, come in with a craft stick or a bodkin or something and just kind of even it out. Now as a final step, because this is going to be a little tacky and your materials may stick to it, um, I use a f the flow and this is just for a coating. It's not going to build up any body but it will uh, cure tack free. And you give a little bit extra shine because this other stuff that's a little tacky will go dull as it gets uh, in contact with things. So just give that a brush all over. All right, once we've cured that, you can give it a rub, tack free. Okay, now we'll move on to the next little part here, which is tying in our materials. And again, those are gonna be on the, what will be the top side of the fly, upside down. Of course, it's gonna ride hook point up. One of the advantages of doing this little bead style on the belly. So the uh, body's really simple. It's gonna consist of some Arctic fox tail and uh, this is a nice benefit of having friends that go to gun shows and buy you full tails or partial tails. Um, so we're going to grab some Arctic Fox and you don't need much. Again, this is a little baby fish. It's not very meaty yet, but yet they will get fed upon. So what I like to do is just grab the Arctic Fox right at the the base where I clipped it and you'll see the the fibers a little fuzzier there and I want to get rid of these guard hairs a little bit so I'm just gonna pull some of those out and then lengthwise you're going for about from the tie-in point about uh, a body length and a half so something about like that you can make it longer shorter depending on you want what you want but these guys are pretty small And then I like to split those to go back between behind the hook there and then come in here and trim off. Okay, now the uh, other material is some flash and slinky. And this is great stuff for streamers, saltwater, uh, bass flies. And uh, so I'm going to grab a, a chunk of this, a little bit more than I did with the white, uh, but not much. Still want to go light on it. So I want to grab a chunk about like that. And this flash and slinky has some slinky flash in it. And so about the same amount lengthwise. And uh, so this is uh, it's going to be a little bit longer, so I'll trim it, but not a big deal. I also like to leave some so I can trim uh, off the front because it's a little bit bulkier. So uh, I'm going to measure that about, again, a length and a half or so. And tie that in right on top where the white was. And we'll split that going back. 
Now for these uh, coarser synthetic materials, I usually grab my synthetic scissors. Uh, it will dull the Dr. Slick razor scissors. But you can come in here and trim that pretty good. And now we're just going to build up a little bit of a head with some of our thread. And this is going to make a spot where we'll put the eyes. And then we just whip finish this. All right, now that we're done with the, the materials, we don't need our thread anymore, we're going to take our eyes. And uh, these are some of the fish skull living eyes. These are three millimeters, because again, these are a little smaller. Uh, in the wind color, which is a uh, kind of an earthy yellow brownish. You maybe match that to whatever. This is more of a brown trouty style flavor <clears throat> that I'll use on local streams. And uh, so I, what I want to do is just to fix the eyes on either side. I don't need to use glue or anything because I'll epoxy or I'll uh, put some resin over them. But so we'll, I, I just like to turn this on its side and then that's how I ap apply the eyes. Okay, now that I've got the eyes on there, we will put some thick. This is the same stuff we used on the egg sac. And I usually just give this a little dab first, right in between where I put the eyes on, and it will fill that gap up. And I'll let that sit, that's thick, so it's going to suck down in, and then zap it. I don't want to put much because, again, I want to cure all the way through and that will help those eyes stay in place. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now I'm going to go back, still with the thick, and put a glob on top there. And on this side, just a little. And now what we'll do is we're going to work this in uh, with my craft stick or whatever device you want to use. Just making sure that it's filling all the little nooks and crannies. And then once you've got that coated, I usually just like to give it a few slower turns. And that will help that all even out. And then zap it as you turn it. And then what I'll usually do with this one again is just take some flow, the tack-free stuff, and then touch it up. 